Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I'm going to show you how regular use of the proteolytic enzymes seropeptase and natokinase supports brain function and, if begun early enough, are especially helpful in avoiding the brain inflammation that leads to Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease is distinguished by a significant increase in a brain enzyme called acetylcholine esterase and the inflammatory cytokines transforming growth factor beta and interleukin-6. Before we dive into how seropeptase and natokinase protect the brain, it's important that you understand how each of these inflammatory compounds function. Acetylcholine esterase is, as you can imagine, an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, a critical neurotransmitter essential for optimal focus, memory, and attention. Drugs that block or otherwise inhibit acetylcholine esterase are common treatments in Alzheimer's because blocking acetylcholine esterase results in a greater brain concentration of acetylcholine and this means better communication between the nerve cells. Acetylcholine esterase also participates in the deposition of the infamous amyloid beta plaque. At the same time, the lipid peroxidation that leads to amyloid plaque produces hydrogen peroxide, which further drives elevation of acetylcholine esterase activity. Transforming growth factor beta is a cytokine that can exhibit both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory activity. In people with Alzheimer's, the significant increase in transforming growth factor beta is likely in response to existing neuroinflammation, vascular hypertrophy, fibrosis, and the accumulation of extracellular matrix components. These in particular contribute directly to the accumulation of amyloid plaque. Transforming growth factor beta is especially inflammatory in the presence of the stress-induced cytokine interleukin-6 and is generally considered an injury-related cytokine. This means that those with a history of physical head trauma and or even consistent social stressors often have elevated levels of both transforming growth factor and interleukin-6. Natto kinase, which is sourced from the traditional fermented soy preparation natto, is well known for digesting the excessive fibrin tangles that lead to blood clots even more efficiently than our body's own natural thrombolytic enzymes, plasmin and elastin. Seropeptase, which was found originally in the intestinal tract of the Japanese silkworm, is a multifunction proteolytic enzyme that can also digest fibrin along with the proteins that comprise mucus, scar tissue, and even the dense matrix of bacterial biofilms among numerous other toxins and inflammatory compounds. Both seropeptase and natokinase, taken together regularly, can significantly decrease the activity of acetylcholine esterase, transforming growth factor beta and interleukin-6, and this supports brain protective mechanisms like brain-derived nootropic factor, which supports the growth and maturation of nerve cells, and also alpha-secretases, which are natural proteolytic enzymes that greatly inhibit the formation of amyloid plaque. Both seropeptase and natokinase can also break down existing amyloid plaque because fibrin is certainly a component of the amyloid plaque, but also both of these enzymes, seropeptase especially, are functionally similar to, to our alpha-secretase enzymes which digest the amyloid precursor protein. Another benefit to dissolving amyloid beta plaque is that doing so prevents pro-inflammatory cytokine production by the brain's glial cells, because the very presence of the amyloid plaque provokes the glial cells into secreting pro-inflammatory cytokines. The ability of seropeptase and natokinase to digest accumulated amyloid beta is a major step toward avoiding brain cell death over time. Oxidative stress is a major cause of neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's disease. Hydrogen peroxide is produced as a byproduct of beta amyloid formation, leading first to neurotoxicity and eventually nerve cell death and DNA fragmentation. Seropeptase and natokinase can reduce reactive oxygen species accumulation in the brain, and this includes hydrogen peroxide, which is needed to activate acetylcholine esterase. Remember that enzymes are measured in units of potency, not milligrams. And for seropeptase and natokinase, these units are seropeptidase units and fibrinolytic units, respectively. Remember to take seropeptase and natokinase on an empty stomach, so this means at least two hours after a meal 
or one hour before, and for even better results, look for an enzyme formula that also includes the antioxidant enzyme catalase, which specifically splits hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. If you remember the injury-related factors that lead to increased inflammation, and how both seropeptase and natokinase can alleviate most of them, then you can really see how these two proteolytic enzymes protect brain function throughout life. Alzheimer's is a progressive condition, so targeting brain inflammation like this is most successful when started earlier rather than later. So don't waste any time. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.